In this video, I'm going to go over recurring transactions in QuickBooks Online to show you how to set up customer invoices, vendor bills, and journal entries to post automatically. I'm going to give you an overview of this feature and hopefully it will help you save a lot of time in your accounting. My name is Michelle and I've been doing remote bookkeeping for several years and you can check out my channel for other videos on a lot of different accounting topics. So to find recurring transactions you would go to the gear icon and it's right here under lists. And you can see that in this sample company they already have a couple of bills set up to post automatically. And you can go in and edit these or if you click on this little drop down arrow there's a place to use if you want to post something that's not on a schedule or you can duplicate it to create another one or you can delete it. And I'm just going to click on one to edit it so you can see what it looks like. You can see that this is scheduled. You can also set it up to just be a reminder and not necessarily post automatically, or you can set it up as an unscheduled recurring bill so that you can post it when the bill comes up. Maybe it's something that's not every month. And you can also set it up to post several days in advance or one day in advance it's up to you. I usually leave this blank so that it posts on the day of the transaction. And you can put a vendor here, you can put an interval, you can see there's options for daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly. Monthly is probably a common one. And you can even post, you can even set up what day it's going to post on that particular month. And there is an option for the last day of the month. And you can do it every two months, every three months, or every one month. It's up to you. You can put different numbers in here. And then you can have a start date and you can tell it when to end. And then you can put in your other information down here as far as what you want in the actual recurring bill. And you can also set up recurring customer invoices and journal entries. We're going to walk through a couple of examples of setting one up. Let's go into a, an invoice. Let's just go to one that's already here. I'm going to go in and edit it and you can see there's this make recurring button right here at the bottom and it brings me right back to that screen that I was in earlier and I can set it up. I can do scheduled, reminder, unscheduled. I can create this in advance. I can set it up on different intervals. So there's a lot of things I can do right here. So let's just say I want to set this up every month on the 5th, starting next month. Now it's automatically going to start the next date that comes up, the next 5th. So I really actually didn't need to put a date in there. I would only need to put a date if, for example, I didn't want it to start till October or some future month. And then let's just say I don't have an end date, but I could put an end date if I wanted to. And I would just save that. And you can see that it is now in my recurring transactions list. Next, I want to do an example of a recurring journal entry. I'm just going to use an example of something that I deal with pretty often. In this case, we're going to assume that the company paid for 12 months of insurance. They paid $12,000 and the company went ahead and put it into a prepaid expense account. And what I want to do is set up a journal entry to take, take $1,000 per month out of prepaid expenses and debit or put it into my insurance expense account. So what I would do first is create the first journal entry. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it at the end of August. They paid up front for the year at the beginning of August. So by the end of August, they've used up a month. You could do this also on 
September 1st. Ask your CPA which is better. But I would be debiting insurance expense for $1,000 per month and crediting to subtract from prepaid expenses. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this entry. This is my first adjusting entry for this situation. And now for the next 11 entries, for the other 11 months, I want to set this up so that I don't have to think about it, so that it posts automatically every month. So I would click on this Make Recurring button. And this is going to bring me to a screen that was similar to the other recurring transactions. I have a place to put the template name. I can do scheduled, reminder, or unscheduled. I'm going to go ahead and schedule this because like I said, I don't want to think about it every month. I just want it to happen. And I'm going to do this every month on the last day of the month. Now, right now it's August 29th and I already created this entry for August 31st. So I don't want it to automatically post at the end of this month because I've already done it this month. So I'm going to have a start date of September 30th. And I'm going to end this after 11 occurrences because I've already posted one month for a thousand and then I want to post 11 more months. So that's 12 months of a thousand dollars each, which is going to fully expense that $12,000 by the end of the time. So I'm going to save this template. And you can go to your prepaid expenses account and look at what you did. So here's my original expense. And then each month it's going to decrease by a thousand till this zeroes out. So that's one example of using a recurring journal entry that is really helpful. Now I also want to do an example of a journal entry that I don't want to necessarily post every month automatically. I want to actually use it myself. An example of that would be a payroll journal entry. Maybe the amounts change every time, but you want all the debits and credits in the entry to make it easier for you to create the entry, but you don't necessarily want it to post automatically since the numbers are going to change and sometimes the accounts change as well. I'm just going to create a very simple payroll journal entry. This is not going to be a full payroll entry. So I'm going to do this as unscheduled and then I'm going to put in my payroll accounts that I might normally use. Okay, this is obviously much shorter than what a real payroll journal entry would look like, but I would set up my template. I would put some numbers in here and then I would save the template. And then each time I have a payroll, I could just go here and click on use and edit it from here and save it. And then I wanna show you one more thing. I wanna show you what happens when I edit something that was already posted from one of these templates. So we're gonna go look at the telephone bill real quick. So you can see when I go to the vendor that this bill has already been posted from my recurring entry. But let's say this month the amount changed. Let's say instead of $74.36, it ended up being $78. So I'm gonna to wanna to change this month's entry. So when I click on save, it gives me this little pop-up that's asking me if I want to update the recurring template or if this is just a one-time only situation. If I do update for all, it's going to change that recurring template to $78 every time. But if I do one time only, it's going to edit this one, this particular bill on August 2023, but then in the next month when it posts automatically, it's going to go back to the $74.36 option. So I hope this video helps. If you want to watch more accounting topic videos, be sure to subscribe and be sure to like this video so that it is more visible to other people so that it can help them as well. Thank you for watching.